One of my favorite sections in the Doctrine and Covenants is section 132, which outlines the sacred promises given to those who make and keep covenants associated with sealing in the temple. Consider these words from Jesus Christ. If a man marry a wife by my word, which is my law, and by the new and everlasting covenant, and it is sealed unto them by the Holy Spirit of promise, by him who is anointed, unto whom I have appointed this power and the keys of this priesthood, and it shall be said unto them, Ye shall come forth in the first resurrection, and shall inherit thrones, kingdoms, principalities, and powers, dominions, all heights and depths. They shall pass by the angels and the gods which are set there to their exaltation and glory in all things, as hath been sealed upon their heads, which glory shall be a fullness and a continuation of the seeds for ever and ever. Then shall they be gods, because they have no end. Therefore shall they be from everlasting to everlasting, because they continue. Then shall they be above all, because all things are subject unto them. Then shall they be gods, because they have all power, and the angels are subject unto them. Those are very powerful promises. As we continue reading in Doctrine and Covenants 132, we learn that central to these promises is receiving Jesus and coming to know him. We read, If you receive me in the world, then shall ye know me, and shall receive your exaltation, that where I am ye shall be also. This is eternal lives, to know the only wise and true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he hath sent. I am he. Receive ye therefore my law. It probably goes without saying, but Jesus Christ himself is at the very center of a temple ceiling. A few years ago, I had an insight during a temple ceiling that helped me see even more deeply how Jesus Christ is central in this sacred ordinance. If you've been to a ceiling room before, you probably noticed that the altar is placed in the center of the room. For millennia, altars have pointed specifically to the death of Jesus Christ. As one example of this, we read that Abraham built an altar and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar. This was a similitude of God and his only begotten son. Elder Bruce C. Hafen described a time when he sealed a couple in the temple. He said, I invited them to the altar, and as the groom took the bride by the hand, I realized that they were about to place upon that altar of sacrifice their own broken hearts and contrite spirits, an offering of themselves to each other and to God in emulation of Christ's sacrifice for them. So picture the scene described by Elder Hafen. The husband and wife are on opposite sides of the altar. The bride and groom take each other by the hand, ready to sacrifice themselves to each other as Christ sacrificed himself for each of them. Whether one thinks of the altar or the hands clasped together on the altar, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is literally at the center of the sealing ordinance. When a husband and wife are sealed together in the temple, their marriage is no longer just about a man and a woman. The Savior is a central third party. This teaching helps us better understand Ephesians 5.25, which also connects marriage to Christ's death. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Regardless of our mood on any given day, we can choose to love our spouse as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Authors Timothy and Kathy Keller beautifully express this concept as follows. When Jesus looked down from the cross, he didn't think, I'm giving myself to you because you are so attractive to me. No, he was in agony. And he looked down at us, denying him, abandoning him, and betraying him. And in the greatest act of love in history, he stayed. He loved us not because we were lovely to him, but to make us lovely. I have felt spiritual power by contemplating how Christ's crucifixion is an essential component of and a model for marriage. His selfless act motivates me to give more. Considering the crucifixion symbolism in a temple ceiling eliminates the justifications for trivial arguments. Husbands and wives can experience a completely new kind of love because Christ demonstrated that love on the cross. This love is symbolically at the center of a temple ceiling and can be at the heart of married life. Now I recognize that not everyone has the opportunity to be sealed in the temple, and that some of those who do will face serious marital challenges. As Elder Neil L. Anderson said, I express my love and compassion to those women and men who have not had the opportunity to marry according to God's laws. The unrealized dreams of life are difficult to understand if viewed only from the perspective of mortality. As the Lord's servant, I promise you that as you are faithful to Jesus Christ in your covenants, 
you will receive compensating blessings in this life and your righteous desires in the eternal timeline of the Lord. Whatever your situation, I testify that Jesus Christ is at the heart of a temple ceiling. This sacred temple ordinance can draw couples closer to each other and to him.